Thou thinketh what I'm thinketh, partner. Aim for the bushes. There goes my hero. Watch him as he... Hey guys, James here again with another Civ 6 video, and today I want to do a guide on the Heroes and Legends mode that was introduced as part of the Civ 6 Frontier Pass, specifically the Babylon Pack. In this mode you get to discover and play as up to 12 different mythological heroes from history. These heroes can not only be quite powerful from a combat perspective, but they'll also have some really powerful special abilities that can sometimes break the game. So without further ado, let's dive into this. Discovering Heroes so of course, before you can even begin to use heroes, you'll first need to discover them. There are actually a number of different ways you can discover heroes, but unfortunately, there can be a bit of luck involved. The most consistent method would have to be through running the Heroic Tales City Project, which will discover a random hero after it's completed. Otherwise, visiting a tribal village will give you a 15% chance of discovering a hero, and discovering a natural wonder or a new continent gives you a 50% chance. Additionally, every envoy you send to a city-state gives you a 10% chance, and if all else fails, becoming the suzerain of a city-state guarantees that you'll be able to discover a hero. Summoning Heroes Once you've discovered a hero, it's then time to summon them. This can be done by running the Devotion 2 City Project. After the Devotion Project finishes, you'll then spawn the hero in your city. Just a couple rules to keep in mind. First, you'll need a monument in the city to be able to perform the Devotion. Next, only one Civ can claim a specific hero, so similar to Wonders, if anyone beats you to the one you want, tough luck. Then, while all major Civs can claim multiple heroes, each city can only claim one hero. Essentially, you can think of the monument in the city as a monument to that hero, and that city becomes their permanent home. Finally, the first Devotion project you run is actually pretty cheap, at only 20 production at standard speed, but each subsequent one you run will be significantly more expensive, increasing by 120 production each time. Heroes. So now let's discuss the legends themselves. First, let's address things that apply to all heroes across the board. You ever hear the saying, legends never die? Well, forget that here. Heroes here are not invincible or immortal. They will take damage and can die to enemy units, and if they don't die in the battlefield, they'll eventually die to old age. Each hero has a lifespan, which is the number of turns they'll be able to live, and in general, most heroes have a lifespan of 30 turns, with Himiko and Wukong being the only ones with extended life. When they die, a few things happen. First, they'll drop a heroic relic, which grants 2 culture, 2 faith, and 6 tourism at their monument. Then, they also leave another heroic relic near the tile where they died, which can then be excavated by an archaeologist later on. You can also excavate opponent heroic relics as well, but you will be limited by the number of devoted monuments you have. Here's a fun little tip, you can actually delete your heroes if you don't have any use for them anymore. This will create the relic earlier, allowing you to accumulate more stats, and it also gives you more control of where the second relic might be located. If ever needed, you can also recall heroes by purchasing them with faith. This can be done either from the city's Purchase with Faith menu, or in the Great Person screen where you can find all heroes. They'll then appear at their home city and will even be able to act that turn, which can actually be pretty clutch. They even have the ability to transfer between city centers, making them even more mobile. Since heroes are assigned to a city, if you do end up losing the home city, you actually won't be able to summon them. Although, neither will the capturing Civ. If the home city actually gets raised, then the hero is actually wiped away from history. But alright, let's start diving into the heroes themselves. First, we have Anansi, the trickster. Anansi is a trickster god commonly depicted as having the body of a spider. Being a spider, he's quite adept in the woods and rainforest, ignoring movement penalties for both. He also has a ranged attack, although with only one range. He has six charges of his ability, Anansi's Tricks, which allows him to consume any resource on the map to generate 60 science and 50 culture, with this amount increasing per era. If you're able to enter the borders of another Civ, you'll actually be able to use this on their resources and improvements, potentially crippling them quite a bit. Anansi's ability is quite strong and can easily get you through the trees if you get them early on. Next. I can breathe! I can fight! Arthur, of Circular Table fame, is here in Civ and is the only melee cavalry hero. Arthur is capable of knighting other units with his ability, Arthur's Accolade. You can do this four times, changing one of your military units into a questing knight. These questing knights are also powerful heavy cavalry units, but they do have a limited lifespan of only 12 turns. This essentially makes Arthur a hero entirely focused on rushes and domination. He needs no introduction. I am Bella! Being such a rugged and handsome man, he ignores movement penalties from hills. He also isn't afraid of anything, and using Beowulf's challenge, he's able to instantly destroy an enemy that has less combat strength than him, including naval units, air units, and enemies hiding in city centers. 
He's one of the stronger heroes, so he should be able to beat out the majority of units he comes up against, being able to use that ability six times. Now, he will find his way, he can go the distance. Hercules, oh Hercules, like Beowulf, is rugged, allowing him to ignore movement penalties from hills. He also has six charges total which can be used between two different abilities. The first is Hercules Labor, which uses two charges to instantly complete an in-progress district. The second is Hercules Rage, which allows him to pillage an enemy district, destroying all the buildings within. Yeah, overall I think Hercules is pretty strong. Himiko is a legendary queen thought by some to have shamanistic abilities. She's unique in that she's the only civilian unit of all the heroes. First, she has a passive ability, Inspiring, which grants plus 5 combat strength to all units within 2 tiles of her. She's also swift and will be able to ignore all terrain movement penalties. With 8 charges she can use 2 different moves. The first, Himiko's Charm, allows her to place one free envoy into an adjacent city-state. If you're already the suzerain of that city-state, you'll also generate faith as a bonus. Meanwhile, Himiko's Rule can only be used on a city-state that you are the suzerain of. It allows you to levy the troops of the city-state at no cost, so here you can see, I was able to levy all one unit my city-state had. Both of these will cost one charge. Despite not being able to attack, she's actually quite useful as she's highly mobile and can get you some pretty nice boosts from city-states early. While Himiko might not be capable of violence, Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, is more than capable of bringing death. By Snoo Snoo. Hippolyta is also rugged, ignoring movement penalties from hills. And then, with Hippolyta's favor, she also automatically heals 20 HP each turn, even if she already attacked. Once per turn, she's also able to use her ability, Hippolyta's Command, which restores the movement of one friendly unit that already moved this turn, including civilian units, naval units, and, in an interesting interaction, she's actually able to fully refresh an entire aerodrome, allowing all airplanes within to attack twice. I don't think that's intentional. Overall, she's another military-focused hero, but seems to take on a bit more of a support role when compared to others. Next we have, and man, I really hope I get this right, Hunahpu and Ishbalanke, the magical Mayan twins. The twins are agile, allowing them to ignore movement penalties from woods and rainforests. Then, with their ability, the twins' resurrection, any normal land unit killed by the twins is resurrected on your side, so definitely try and give them the last hits. And now, what can I say except, you're welcome, Maui is here. Maui is agile allowing him to ignore penalties in woods and rainforests, and then with his ability Maui's Inventions, you're also able to create a random bonus or luxury resource on an unowned, empty tile. This can be really helpful in making your city stronger, giving stats, and potential adjacencies. Something to note is that the resource spawn will be based on the possible types of resources on that tile. So for example, on a marsh you'll be able to spawn sugar or truffles, and on reefs you might be able to spawn turtles. Strategically deciding which tiles you use the ability on can help you more reliably get the luxury that you want. Also, another interesting tip. If you ever find a tile that Maui can't create a resource on, you might notice that it says a resource already exists on that tile. This means that a strategic resource is hidden in that spot. Up next, who is that girl I see? It's Mulan, who appears as a ranged cavalry unit. She doesn't have any active abilities, but her passive abilities can make her quite strong. For one thing, as a ranged unit she's actually able to exert zone of control, and she also has the longest range of any hero. With Mulan's devotion, she gains one combat strength every turn, so that guarantees that she'll be able to keep scaling, and if she survives into her later life, she'll be stronger than even Hercules. Mulan's Defiance makes it so that she fortifies automatically at the end of every turn, allowing her to attack every turn, while also keeping up her defense. Her combination of movement, range, and power make her a very deadly hero. Hmm, so who's next? Oh yeah, it's Oya, the goddess of change, winds, and storms. Oya is swift, allowing her to ignore all terrain movement penalties, and with her ability, Oya Storm, she's able to damage all adjacent enemies, including religious units, and heal all your units as well. She has 6 charges of this, giving a ton of potential value with this ability, if you can properly line up everything. Alright guys, don't forget to hit that thumbs up so that we can meet up with Sinbad and retire to Fiji. Sinbad is the only naval hero. He has the ability to enter ocean tiles from the get-go, and with his passive ability, Sinbad's Journeys, he'll earn you gold every time he discovers a continent or a natural wonder. Then, with Sinbad's Fortunes, you can target an adjacent enemy naval unit or barbarian camp. The target is cleared or damaged by 50%, and then Sinbad earns gold. The amount you earn increases with the era as well. These abilities can make Sinbad totally insane, particularly on larger and more ocean-based maps, and it won't be long before you're rolling around in booty. And finally, Welcome to Civilization 6 Champion Spotlight, featuring Wukong, the Monkey King. 
Wukong is swift, allowing him to ignore all terrain movement penalties, and with a pretty crazy 6 movement, he's really mobile as well. Additionally, Wukong's disguise makes it so that he's hidden unless adjacent to an enemy unit. This essentially makes him a land submarine. Speaking of subs, maybe consider hitting that button down below. But as you can see here, I'm moving Wukong around on one, but he doesn't show up until he's adjacent to enemy units on the other screen. This, along with his high mobility, makes him a particularly strong pillager and flanker. Then, he has another ability, Wukong's Immortality, which grants him a longer than usual lifespan, giving him 50 turns to work with. Overall, pretty solid. Okay, so here I've put together a quick table for you to gauge their base stats. I have a second table for the ranged attack powers below. First, you'll notice that the stats for each hero will scale according to era. However, this depends on the era in which you spawn the hero and not the era that it's currently in. Each hero will also fall into one of the standard unit classes, such as melee, ranged, and whatever it might be. Their stats will usually be greater than the corresponding unit of that type for that era. So for example, in the Ancient Era, pretty much every melee hero significantly outclasses the warrior, with Hercules even outdoing the swordsman. Again though, keep in mind that the stats are based on the era you summon the hero. In terms of just pure attack power, it will change a bit from era to era, but the top 5 are pretty much Hercules, Arthur, Hippolyta, Beowulf, and Wukong, with Mulan eventually beating all of them with time. Finally, a few small helpful things. Having a shrine in the city you summon a hero increases its lifespan by 10%. Temples also grant the owners a 15% discount when resurrecting that hero with faith. Then, the Hanging Gardens increases the lifespan of all your heroes by 10%, and the Oracle grants a 15% discount when purchasing heroes with faith. And finally, there's also a religious belief, reliquaries, which will boost the output of heroic relics. And that's most everything I had. If I missed anything or you know any fun interactions with the heroes, definitely let me know in a comment down below. Otherwise, if you made it this far, I just want to say I appreciate you, and I hope you're doing well. Peace.